I'm going to walk through exactly how we get the R squared, which is also called the coefficient of determination, and introduce you also to a term that I bet you haven't heard, the coefficient of alienation. In order to illustrate the R squared, also called the coefficient of determination, I've just imagined a small sample of 10 paired observations where x, my independent variable, is years of education. So here in the first observation, the 9 stands for 9 years of education, or for example, a freshman in high school. And then my dependent variable, y, is an hourly wage or hourly earnings. So the 12 is, for example, $12 per hour. Then I've plotted that data set that I just made up or imagined here. So the scatter plot in blue are those actual observations. And then I just asked Excel to generate for me the regression line that I've been covering in these previous videos. And that you'll recall that's the OLS or ordinary least squares regression line. Certainly not the only algorithm we can use, just the most popular. And Excel gives for me automatically the coefficients, the regression coefficients, including the slope and the intercept. So I have an intercept here of 3.84, $3.84. It's not plotted, and a slope of $1.35. And recall, we can interpret that a slope coefficient in the following way. For each one unit increase in the independent variable, what do we expect the association to be in the dependent? So in this case, a one-year increase in education is associated with a $1.35 increase in the hourly wage. And then I've also asked Excel to automatically run for me its super cool array function, the linest function that generates the regression coefficients and statistics for me. And so you'll notice that the first row in the linest array function is those regression coefficients. Here's the, here's the slope and here's the intercept. Okay, so with that data set then I have here X, years of education or independent, Y is dependent, hourly wage, and then in green, the predicted Y, which is my regression line in dashed green, and that is the predicted or expected hourly wage given or conditional on some years of education. So in this first example, with the regression line, for nine years of education, the regression line predicts, you can see here, an hourly wage of almost $16 an hour when the actual is only 12. So you can see that observation is below the regression line. So now to get the R squared and to, to go at it manually, I'm going to look at two different differences here. Here's a difference and here's the other difference. The first difference is just the observed, the difference between the observed Y and the average of all the y values. My average here is in orange, and I tweak the numbers a little bit to get a round number of $22 per hour is the average of just my y values. So it has nothing to do with the x, or independent, it's a univariate statistic. And so it naturally plots here as a horizontal line at $22 per hour. So that here in this column, I simply have the difference between the actual Y and the average Y. So in the case just of that first observation, my actual is $12 per hour here, but the average is 22, such that that difference here going from the average to, well, didn't do that very well. I meant to do, a, okay, going from the average to the observation, you can see is exactly $10 or minus 10. And then this column here simply squares that 10 to 100. And then we have, we can sum this series of squared differences. And that's called the total sum of squares. It's not an intuitive number by itself. In this case, it's 262, but this is a measure of total variation, right? Total variation in these observations around their mean. Total sum of squares is the sum of squared differences between the observed y values and their average. 
Okay, then there's just one other measure of variation that I want. That's the sum of squared residuals. I covered this also in a previous video, but here we have the observed y, not minus the average y values, but the value that would be predicted by the regression line. So you can see here in this first case, nine years of education, actual is 12, but my predicted is almost 16, so that's a difference of almost four or negative four. And that's the difference here between the regression line and the observation, and I'm gonna round it here, it's closer to four. So you see here we have a difference from the regression line and a difference from the average of all the y values. So that difference is squared, and then the summation of all of those differences is the sum of squared residuals. So this is, this is also a measure of variation, but whereas the TSS is a measure of total variation, this is what is called a measure of unexplained variation, right? Because it's the variation from the regression line, so it's not explained by the regression, sum of squared residuals. So both of these are variations. Now, if we take the total sum of squares and that measure of variation and divide by its degrees of freedom, which is n minus one or 10 minus one, which is nine, then we get here 29.11, and that's the sample variance of just the y values, such that its square root, the square root here of that sample variance, of course, is the sample standard deviation. And you'll notice I reintroduced the dollar sign here because its units are intuitive. Its units are the units of the dependent or the hourly wage. So $5.40 here is exactly, if we just went and calculated this with the uh, Excel's standard sample standard deviation function, we would get $5.40. But it's the square root of the sample variance, which itself is that measure of total variation divided by degrees of freedom. Okay, so if we go over to the sum of squared residuals, again, this is the measure of unexplained variation if we divide by its degrees of freedom, which is eight instead of nine because we're involving the regression now and we needed to estimate two coefficients. So the, the degrees of freedom here for the unexplained variation is n minus two in a univariate regression because we we have we consume two degrees of freedom in estimating two coefficients. And so we get here 14.08, and if we take the square root of that, introduce, I introduce the dollar sign back, what I get is the standard error of the regression, 375, and that's a measure you will recall of dispersion here of these observations around the regression line. So it's a measure of goodness of fit, and the $3.35, you notice, also conveniently is automatically generated in the line S function. It's here in the third row, 375, match to the 375. Okay, so now I am to the R squared, or coefficient of determination, and what I have here is I take simply the sum of squared residuals divided by the total sum of squares. So what is that intuitively? Well, that's my measure of unexplained variation divided by my total variation. And this also has a name, you don't see it much, but it's called the coefficient of alienation. And in this case, it's 0 0.43 or 43%. How much of the variation, it's how much of the variation is not explained by the regression. Such that if we take one minus that coefficient of alienation, we would get the explained sum of square divided by the total sum of squared, or one minus the coefficient of alienation, which is 57, a 0.57 or 57%. And this is the R squared, or the coefficient of determination. And you probably noticed that it's automatically generated for us also in the line S function, which is very cool. So this, this is interpreted as the 
percentage of or proportion of total variation that is explained by the regression. In this case, 57%. Some people don't think that's very high. I think that's a very, I think that's a high R squared in any univariate regression. And so finally, when we do have a univariate regression, by which I mean a single independent variable, if we take the R squared and we take the square root of it, in this case, square root of 0.57 is 0 0.75, well, then we get the Pearson correlation coefficient. So the same value we'd get if we just asked Excel to run the correlation, in this case, 0.75 or 75%. So that's the um, interpretation of the R squared or coefficient of determination. Thank you.